Hi, this is Vesso from Chaos. In this video, we'll go through the process that I've used to create a scene containing several animal characters. We're going to start by looking at the modeling phase first. Next, we'll take a look at the grooming process and how I prepared the characters to be groomed. After that, I'll walk you through the texture creation for the clothes of the characters and the shading in 3ds Max and V-Ray. And finally, we'll render the final image in high resolution using the V-Ray Cloud. Alright, let's begin. For this project, I had a very nice concept art piece and I tried to stick to it as much as possible. Usually when I create characters, I start in a sculpting application such as ZBrush. Sometimes I create the base models in 3ds Max or Maya and then move them to ZBrush for detailing. But sometimes I start entirely in ZBrush. I started modeling the cat's character's head first. Started from a sphere and just used the move brush for the most part to create the base shape and silhouette. I usually put the eyes in very early in the process and also poly paint them here in ZBrush just so they look like eyes and not plain spheres. The reason I do that is I try to get the character's expression as early as possible and work from there. Those eyes in ZBrush are just placeholders. I usually replace them later with a more detailed version in 3ds Max. Once I have the basic shape of the head, I go ahead and create the body of the character. I usually keep the body and the head as one mesh, but in this particular case, I decided to split them up. The head is going to be covered in fur, and the body has clothes on it so the fur wouldn't be visible, and if it's not visible, there is no point in making it. So for that reason, I kept the head separate to make the grooming process easier later. Next, I created the clothes base meshes in 3ds Max and moved them over to ZBrush. After that, I pose the character and unwrap the UVs. I keep everything as low poly as possible until I have the character posed. This way, it's easier to make changes and move things around. After posing it, I started to gradually subdivide it and add details. I usually do that in iterations. Subdivide, then sculpt until the resolution becomes not enough, then subdivide again and repeat the process. I do that until I'm satisfied with the result. Once completed, the model is ready to be exported and moved to 3ds Max for grooming, shading and rendering. Using the exact same approach, I started to model the rat characters. There are 5 rats in the concept and to save time, what I did was to model one rat character and then reuse it 4 more times to create the rest of the rats. So I've created one generic rat in a neutral pose, which I then used as a starting point to pose and sculpt each one of the rats. This way the mesh for the rat's body has the same number of vertices for all of the rats since it's the same mesh, just posed differently. That would come in handy later when I do the grooming, I'll show you that in a little bit. So once I had all of the rat characters posed, unwrapped and detailed, I moved all of them to 3ds Max for the grooming part. I used the Ornatrix for 3ds Max plugin to do the grooming for the characters. I started with the cat character. So what I did was duplicate the mesh of the head and then delete all of the polygons where there shouldn't be any hair. In this case, it's just the eye sockets. Next, I applied the Ornatrix hair and fur to that mesh, which created a bunch of hair guides placed perpendicular to the surface. Inside the guides from surface modifier, I can change stuff like the hair strand distribution, the root count and the global length of the hair. To give the hair a direction, I've applied a surface comb modifier and placed those blue arrows to establish the direction in which the hair should grow. Next, I applied the edit guides modifier to style the hair further. This modifier gives me a lot of brushes which I've used to fine tune the groom and style it to look more like the concept art. After that, there is a modifier that turns the guides into actual hair strands. And then added a couple of modifiers for the width and length of the hair. 
Finally, I added a frizz and clustering modifiers that helped to add a little bit more variation to the hair by making it not so uniform. I did the exact same thing for the hands and the tail of the character which pretty much completes the grooming for the cat. For the rats, I used the exact same technique. Since all of the rats are very similar in the styling of the fur, I decided to save time and do one groom for all of them and just slightly modify each version so they don't look exactly the same. Let me show you how I did that. As I mentioned before, while modeling I created one generic mesh for the rats and posed it in 5 different poses. So theoretically all of the rats are using the same mesh with the same number of vertices. That allows me to use the Morpher modifier to switch between the different meshes. Let me show you an example of that. In this example, I have three poses of the character mesh next to each other. Let's say you've completed the grooming on the very first mesh, just like the example I have here. So to get the exact groom onto the other meshes, what we can do is select the first mesh and apply a Morpher modifier. In the channel list, we need to select an empty channel and assign a morph target to it. We can do so by clicking on the pick object from scene button and selecting the second rat. Then repeat the same process and assign the third rat to a new channel. So now if I select the first channel and set the morph value next to it to 100, the shape of the mesh will transform into the shape of the mesh of the second rat preserving all of the previously created grooming. I can also easily switch to the third morph as well. Using that method, I've created the hair for all of the rats using only one grooming. I then use the styling brushes to adjust each individual one a little bit, but in general this technique saved me a lot of time doing the same thing over and over. Alright, after having the models and the grooming all completed, I move to texturing and shading of the characters. I use Substance Painter to do so. For the clothing of the cat, I started from the jacket and worked my way up until I textured all of the clothing pieces. So for the jacket, I started with just a few layer with a darker shade of red. Then I added some grunge on top of it to make it look more like fabric. After that, I added some discoloration in certain areas and also spent a little bit of time around the folds of the sleeves just so I can emphasize that the fabric is more worn out in those places. Finally, I added some stitches around the edges to make it look more interesting. I used the same logic to create the rest of the texturing for the cat's accessories. Also used some of the presets that come with Substance Painter to create the leather and the metal pieces. I'm not going to go into details of how I've done it. You can check out some of the tutorials on the Chaos TV YouTube channel for a more detailed look of how to create those types of materials. For example, the how to shade a character tutorial shows a more detailed version of the texturing and shading process. Ok, I continue to texture the clothes of the rats using the same method. And once I had all of the clothes of the characters completed, I exported them from Substance Painter and brought them over to 3ds Max to set up the shading. For the materials of the clothes, I used a standard V-Ray material and simply plugged in the textures exported from Substance Painter. I color corrected some of the textures to adjust them to look good in the lighting conditions of the scene. I also introduced a little bit of sheen just so it creates a nice fall off effect on the surface and gives a soft fabric look and feel. After that, I hand painted the textures for the hair and the skin of the characters. Those textures don't need to be very detailed because since the characters are animals they are going to be covered in fur. So for the most part I painted only a diffuse texture using only a few different colors. Then I used the V-Ray hair material together with that texture to create the fur. The V-Ray hair material has a realistic approach in coloring the hair strands by adjusting the melanin amount. More melanin results in a darker hair color and less melanin would make the hair brighter. If I remove the melanin completely, the hair will lose all of its pigmentation and it will appear pure white. At that point, I can use the dye color to shade the hair in a custom color. Having that in mind, I took almost all of the melanin out and plugged in the texture that I just painted into the dye color slot. 
This way the character's hair would be shaded using the colors from the texture. I color corrected the texture a little bit to make it fit the rest of the image. Then I repeated the process for the rest of the characters. Great! Once the materials are done, the image is ready for its final render. We can do a preview render here in 3ds Max using the V-Ray frame buffer and then do a high resolution 4K render using the Chaos Cloud. So let me go ahead and set a higher resolution, something around 4K. Then I'll leave the quality V-Ray settings to their default and go to the Render Elements tab. I'll add the Back to Beauty Render Element which contains all of the basic render elements needed to recreate the image. After I have all of that stuff set, I'm going to click on the Chaos Cloud icon on the V-Ray toolbar to open the Submit to Chaos Cloud window. And I'll simply click Submit. The scene gets exported and sent to the Chaos Cloud service. It automatically takes me to my browser where I can name the scene or assign it to a project. I can also set the resolution here or match the scene resolution from 3ds Max. Once ready, I can go ahead and click Submit to make the rendering process start. One of the great things about the Chaos Cloud is that once you submit the job, you can continue working on your machine. Otherwise, while rendering, your local machine is pretty much unusable. Alright, once the rendering is completed, we can download the image and view it using the Chaos Player. We get a JPEG version of the image and all of the render elements and also a multi-channel EXR which contains the uncompressed image and all of the render elements all in one file. Multi-channel EXR files are used in compositing and color grading, so not every image viewer is capable of opening those type of files. A great tool for viewing such files and previewing image sequences is Chaos Player. EXR files together with all of the render elements data can get pretty big in size but Chaos Player opens them very fast. It allows you to view all of the separate render elements as well and do some color corrections and compositing. In this video, we've gone through the process of creating several animal characters. We've explored the modeling phase using sculpting software ZBrush, then moved forward to the grooming of the characters using the Ornatrix plugin for 3ds Max, Finally, we've looked at the texturing and shading process in Substance Painter and V-Ray. In the end, we've rendered the final image in high resolution using the Chaos Cloud. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful and helpful. Thank you for watching.